Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the third and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 2, Atomic Structure, where we will be looking at orbitals and electronic configuration. As mentioned in the first IB Chemistry Topic 2 video, electrons are found in a hierarchy known as energy levels. Each energy level can hold a total of two n squared electrons where n is the energy level number. This can be remembered using this table. However, more interestingly, with each energy level, there is a system of sublevels known as orbitals. Orbitals are regions of space with a high probability of finding an electron. Orbitals can come in many different shapes, and there are several key properties you need to be aware of. All orbitals can contain a maximum of two electrons. The Aufbau principle states that electrons fill orbitals from the lowest energy level first. Hund's rule states that electrons will partially fill all orbitals of a single energy level before fully filling any single orbital of a single energy level. The Pauli exclusion principle states that the electrons within a single orbital must have opposite spins from one another. Whilst you don't need to worry about the names of these principles, you should understand and memorize the rules themselves. Orbitals can come in several different types, S, P, D, and F. These types have different energies, numbers, and shapes. So let's look at them. There is only one type of s orbital, which is spherical in shape. There are three types of p orbital, which are propeller in shape. There are five types of d orbitals, which you do not need to know the shapes of. And there are seven types of f orbital, which likewise you do not need to know the shapes of. s are the lowest in energy, followed by p, d, and finally F, which is the highest energy level. As previously mentioned, each energy level contains a set number of electrons. We also mentioned that electrons will fill orbitals from the lowest energy level first. Thus, each energy level contains a set number of each type of orbital. This is given by the handy table below. This table looks complex, but the pattern is quite simple. The first energy level contains the 1s orbital. The second energy level contains the same orbital plus the 3p orbitals. The third energy level contains the s orbital, the 3p orbitals, plus the 5d orbitals. And the fourth energy level contains the s, p, d orbitals, and the seven f orbitals. Looking at the total number of electrons found at each energy level, we can therefore see the familiar pattern of 2, 8, 18, that you may remember from before IB when referring to electron shells. But you now know them by their more correct name of energy levels. But how does this all relate to the structure of an individual atom? Well, this is where electronic configuration comes in. To make this much easier, you can consider the types of orbitals overlaid onto specific blocks of the periodic table. The S block covers the first and second groups of the periodic table. The D block covers the third to twelfth group, i.e. the transition elements. The P block covers the thirteenth through the eighteenth group. The F block covers the lower segment of the periodic table, the lanthanides and actinides. You are almost certainly not going to use F orbitals in your IB chemistry exam, so just be aware they exist. To denote the full electronic configuration of an atom, each electron is written with the period number it is found within, followed by the orbital in which it is contained raised to the power of the number of electrons in that orbital. 
This sounds complex, but it is quite simple by learning to read the periodic table like a book, left to right, top to bottom. Let's look at two examples. Write the full electronic configuration of boron, and write the full electronic configuration of bromine. For boron, starting from hydrogen, we would count 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, and finally 2p1. So, the full electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. For bromine, again, starting from hydrogen, we would count 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4s1, 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 4p1, 2, 3, 4, and finally 4p5. So, the full electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. As you can see, for longer electronic configurations, this can get quite laborious. So, a condensed electronic configuration can be written with reference to the directly preceding noble gas. For example, bromine would not be the previous electronic configuration given, but instead, argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. You must also be comfortable writing electronic configurations visually using box diagrams. Herein, each box represents an orbital, with a half-headed arrow representing a single electron within each box. There are several rules to follow based on the principles we mentioned earlier in this video. Each orbital can only contain two electrons, so each box contains a maximum of two arrows. Both electrons must have opposite spins, so each box contains arrows of opposite directions. As the orbitals have different energy levels, each set of boxes is drawn at a new height. Let's reuse our examples of boron and bromine as a reminder their full electronic configurations are here. So, converting these into visual representations, they would become the following. You can now understand and draw full electronic configurations, numerically and visually. However, as with most things in the IB syllabus, there are always exceptions. There are two important exceptions that you need to know for electronic configuration. Chromium and copper. Based on the Afbal principle, you would expect the electronic configurations of these atoms to be as follows. However, the 3d orbital is higher in energy, and so, in both species, it is more favourable to promote one electron from the 4s orbital to the 3d orbital, so that the 3d orbital is half full or full, respectively. So, their actual electronic configurations are as follows. 4s1, 3d5, and 4s1, 3d10. You need to know these electronic configurations by heart. Now that we have covered electronic configuration in depth, it is worth noting that once you become familiar with electronic configurations, you do not need to count up the periodic table as methodically as we have taught. You simply find the location of the element and you will know which orbital this relates to. Then you will have memorised the preceding electronic configuration. For example, write the full electronic configuration of gallium. Gallium is the first element in the P block in period 4 so the electronic configuration ends with 4p1. Now, just write the maximum filled orbitals 
of everything you know that comes before from practice. So, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and finally 4p1. Easy. We hope you enjoyed the third and final video in our IB Chemistry Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards, and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.